Bang, Neves Knives. I'm Jared and today's video is some long-term updates. And I'm just gonna kinda talk, you know, and uh, talk about my experience with these knives and how they're holding up, etc. So this is the Tucson TS-129. It got a really good review. Um, I do like this knife quite a bit. One of the reasons why I love this knife so much, um, well, first off, mine's an M390, milled titanium, really nice milling, perfect clip. I love this clip. It works so good. One of the best milled titanium clips. And then really, really well done carbon fiber. Tucson does a really good job with their carbon fiber. It's nice and contoured. Um, but one of the reasons why I loved it so much is because of its cutting performance. The ergos just, they melt in your hand. And when you get this choked up grip right behind the edge and you're cutting, if you look at the, the blade shape, it kind of... Um, you know, I was calling it in the review, I think, uh, a drop foot. But, you know, it's a, basically a modified sheep's foot. But it kind of beaks out a little bit. And that makes it to where when you're doing long cuts, it just stays in the cut. And, like, at the end of your cut, you can kind of just turn your wrist a little bit and finish out, like, a really long cut. It really makes for ease of cutting cardboard and breaking things down and even pulling like cutting straps because of the beak you can snag behind a strap and pop it really quick for utility cuts again you know it's just so good for edc this is one of my favorite blade shapes for edc and that's why this thing was just so good for the review access to the lock bar is really good the reverse flicking action is amazing and then with the reverse flicking action, as good as it is, the thumb flicking action is just as good. The way that hole deployment goes with the chamfer around the hole, it makes it to where you have perfect leverage for a thumb flick. Then you have jipping for the front flipper. Front flipper works great. Now on the closing part, it's not the most false shutty or anything, but it's very smooth. It is still on ceramic cage bearings on a track, but this is one that is held up very, 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 very well. Now, the M390, it's not the best. Um, it takes a really good edge. So, sharpening and um, maintenance, you know, maintaining the edge, stopping, etc. It does really good with it. Takes, I mean, takes an incredible fine edge. So, it, it gives off the impression that it's going to be very well done M390, but the edge retention is just not there. You don't get the long lasting edge retention like you would from very well done or, you know, more premium M390, but you still get the other values, which is the corrosion resistance, you know, like I said, the keen edges, and it still does, you know, hold a really good edge, just not up to par with what you'd expect from like premium M390. But for the price you're getting, I mean, if it was S30V, I would still pay the same price. So that being said, I think it is well worth the money. Next. Now, this is one that has surprised me quite a bit because when I first got it, I did not think I was going to like it as much as I do. I really did not. Um, one, you know, this... Uh, sharpening notch thing or this i guess it's a guard to stop you from slipping up the blade i don't like the look of it um and i don't like things like that usually but i am coming around to it i'll be honest i'm coming around to it but first off s30v frn scales deep carry clip and they put these little uh teeth right there to help getting it in and out of the pocket they made a little landing zone for the clip to help it you know not tear your pants up they do have an aluminum version that they just came out with this with on this model so you can get this exact same model with aluminum scales i almost bought it and the only thing that stopped me was when i watched a little thing on knife center he kind of made it seem like the clip was going to be a pocket shredder on top of the g10 because they have it's aluminum with uh, g10 inlays and i just i felt that vibe from him when he was talking about it now the next thing that i didn't really like is this hole it's not the i wish it was a little bit bigger it's just you can do it you can obviously flick it. I am right now. But you just wish you had a little bit more leverage from it. Um, it feels kind of mushy when you're deploying it. Like it's like, meh, you know. But 
the slow roll is great and um, one of the greatest things this their version of the access lock or crossbar lock has been I mean rock solid I can't stress that enough I have zero up and down zero side to side when I do slow roll it open I can really I know it's not going to come over the camera or the microphone I mean but I can feel it click in which I like it's satisfying and now the reason why it has really really grown on to me is it is so comfortable in the hand and when you're cutting with it so when I'm breaking down cardboard this little thing acts as a ramp to pull material in so I hold it up here I choke it up really nice and close to the edge like I like to do with my push cuts and I'm holding cardboard and I'm breaking down and I just let the cardboard go right past my finger and it just slides right into the edge and it's like it you can do fast repeated cuts and it's comfortable, no fatigue in the hand, unless if you're, you know, when I was doing really heavy duty cardboard, yeah, of course, any knife, I don't care what it is, you're gonna get some fatigue in the hand, but this is, a, you know, really, really good. Now, holding back here, you do have the choil in the way, so usually you're like this, but um, either way, the cutting performance is really, really good. The edge that they put on from the factory is a nice low angle, which is another thing I really love. So it already comes with a nice low angle. Now I have resharpened it. And I do think that they might be possibly running their S30V a little bit softer than I would prefer. But it's S30V, you know, it's fine. Not that bad, but just, you know, I do think they're running it a little bit softer than I would like. Either way, man, the cutting performance and just the workability of this knife, fantastic knife. I really like that one. Next, this new real steel. Um, so I've had some issues with this one. So one, um, oh, by the way, VG10. Now what's cool about this is the titanium. They got this beautiful anodized, um, titanium with the black coating it does pop and they have it in like a little bunch of little hidden spots like you see how it's polished right there on the lock bar access have a little a micro jimping on the lock bar they got it in the clip there's a lot of little details on this that just it, it is really well done and it looks really good the front flipping action does work well I got some detent lash. Pretty significant detent lash. If this was a flipper, I'd be going nuts. The, since it's a front flipper, I don't feel it as much. Do I need to... I think I need to tighten the pivot a little bit. Maybe not. Anyways. Um, but the next thing is it's... Get, got a little bit of lock slip now i've noticed this across the board with a lot of real steels lately um seems like the last three that i've gotten everything aside from their crossbar lock has had lock rock so and it doesn't take much for me to really stress it out you can see it moving right there so when I just go like this, and if I crank on it, I could probably get it to fail. I'm not going to do that, but I can, yeah, I can feel the lock bar budging and moving. So that's, you know, kind of a big deal. Not, I mean, I guess it's up to you if that's a big deal, because does that mean it's going to fail on you? No, no, because when you're holding it, you're holding the lock bar, you're keeping it stronger. It's going to cut just fine. Um... And this is not this is not a hard use knife. This is not something that you know you you use in a hard way. You know, it's just a light duty EDC that looks really good. You know, so it's not that big of a deal, but it is a thing. Now the the, the detent lash, I, I would expect better. Also for VG10. 175 this is overpriced way too overpriced this should have some s30v s35 something like that um 
if he, even like 154 cm would be better i know they put a lot of the work into the titanium which is fine but to have these couple issues this is just it's not acceptable for the price and i think the price is just a little too high you know even without issues next we have this Manganas Kaiser Gracioso. Now this is the titanium version. I do have a full review on the, the liner lock version. Um, and it got a good review. And surprisingly, because it's not really my style of knife, not even a little bit. Um, I don't like the plunge grind. You know, it's got this recurve. However, when you're using it, it, it's pretty cool because you have this recurve so you you have the ability to get right tight to that edge and do these repeat cuts kind of like I was talking about with the, um, the Sig Sar by Hogue and that makes it to where it just kind of pulls materials in and then it has this harpoon drop point style blade so you can still pull off utility cuts this thing is ridiculously smooth oh by the way 20 CV steel titanium titanium milled pocket clip and backspacer and then it's got shred carbon fiber it is very well done and it is a straight guillotine they even put a detent ramp so if you do hit the detent i mean you can just slide right past it the action is really good fantastic action so so smooth man i mean but i got a little bit of lock rock so not much and i don't think it's that big of an issue um it, you know like i said before you know when i'm squeezing it, you're not going to get anything like that because you're putting more pressure on the lock bar but when i test it i can feel it budging just a little bit um other than that really you know the only other thing is that you know it's a little bit pokey down here um in the corner right here when I'm like deploying it. And then I noticed that the jimping's kind of, even though it does have jimping, it's a little slick. So you, I tend to, I slide off sometimes, not that big of a deal because I know it. So I, it doesn't really happen since I know it. And the, the action is amazing. Now with sharpening and everything, you know, you got to use thinner stones. I believe I did full sharpening and all that in the full review of the liner lock version. But I do like it. I do like it. I just uh, wish it had T8s. I wish, um, you know, it didn't have this little tiny bit of lock rock. And, and I could probably fix it on this one. This one's very, very minimal. And I do kind of wish, even though I understand what they were going for here with the choil, the one thing I don't like is that, you know, the more I sharpen, it's just going to back up farther and farther and get uglier and uglier and push me out of the choil. So, and that's just the way this goes when you have the edge go all the way up to the, to the choil like that without any type of separation. Next, <laughs> so now we have the Hellraiser, the Red Horse Hellraiser. So there are custom versions of this that are made in other knives that he has that are made in the USA. He is right here out of my area in well in Chicago. So I like that. Um, I Man, I should have cleaned this thing. I'm sorry, guys. Um, we're just going to run with it. I'm sorry. It is filthy. Um, it's super comfortable in the hand. We have S35 VN blade seal. Great access to the lock bar. Stupid, stupid smooth. The action is just ridiculous. And the way it goes is you have such good leverage from the thumb stud. And the blade is so damn heavy that once you break the detent, it just it carries itself. And then the same thing on the, the clothes, since it's so heavy, it just carries itself. The action is really good. Um, somewhat addicting in a way, because of all that leverage from the blade, you know, especially being so front heavy. Now, cutting with it, so comfortable in the hand. 
very, very comfortable. I love the way how it arches. It just follows my hand. That is amazing. Now the downside, this is robust geometry, super thick geometry, and it makes it where it's very difficult to push this through materials. Lucky you do have you know, uh, such a comfortable grip. And if you're just using it for basic EDC, you know, opening things up, maybe cutting some cardboard every once in a while, you'll be just fine. No problems with that. But if you're planning on breaking down some cardboard long term in any way, shape, or form, it's going to be a little too thick for you. It would have been way better with a nice deep hollow grind and it would have looked a lot better. That would really make this thing pop. And I bet you a lot more people would even buy it if it had a nice deep hollow grind. But I do think that this is a little bit overpriced. So I understand the company is in the US, but he does have these made overseas. Now he has USA made versions of this for more money, but this one, this particular one's made overseas. Now they have button lock versions of this as well, but for around $250, for not much more, you can get a titanium knife made in the USA with premium steel, premium steel and premium handle materials. This you're getting S35VN, which is fine. You know, that's still a premium steel, but then we have steel liners. Um, the carbon fiber is very, very nice, very well done. And we have a titanium clip, but you know, for I would this seems like it's made in the US with this price not overseas so I would expect the price to be a little bit less considering the materials and considering what overseas knives cost even with a company owning um, you know owning it and having the the knives made overseas so I think it is a little bit too overpriced the s35 feels fine nothing really wrong with that um, but you know, I just, I do kind of wish it was a little bit thinner geometry because that also takes away, like, you struggle a lot pushing through materials, which seems to kind of make the edge go duller a little bit faster. I'm not going to push it on the, um, the, the actual steel itself, but more so the geometry. Now, you can always lower back the edge angle, which will make it cut a lot better. So that is always a thing. And that's what I'm going to do on the next sharpening. I'm just going to lower the angle back and really, you know, put a low, low angle on it, which will heavily increase the cutting performance. The clip works great. Feels great in the hand. It's not deep carry, but it does work very well. Um, and yeah, uh, really well done carbon fiber. Now the lock bar very delicate lock bar in a way it's not it this is probably my biggest complaint aside from the geometry is that the lock bar feels very soft it feels thin it feels fragile um no play really i'm sure if i really muscled on it i could get it to to budge a little bit but it feels very solid but just when you disengage it it's so soft but as we know, it's not about the lock bar pressure, it's about the lock face geometry. And in this case, they, they got the lock face geometry pretty good, um, or really good. It just, you know, it feels a little bit delicate. Um, just the lock bar, the pressure, how thin it is, so on and so forth. But the lockup's really solid, so no issues. Next, the Sidewinder, the Tucson TS341 Sidewinder. Now, this one, you know, I thought I was going to like it a lot more than I do. Um, and I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying when I seen the pictures and everything before I bought it, I was like, man, I like that. It's a Mazwan Mokdar design. Like, he's going to kill this. But I think he kind of fumbled the bag on this one a little bit. Now, I love what he did with the clip. Thank you for doing a good clip because I, I do not like his ball clips. I don't know. Something about it. It just doesn't have that level of smoothness you want. The front flipper, it works. It works fine, but it's only up here. So you have to put your thumb on top of it and then put pressure straight down and then back. It'd be better if they put a little bit right here too so you could get it in the front. You know, and in this case, there's no jimping here on the front. I mean, I can flick it there, but there's no jimping. I'm just using pressure, which I would prefer if it had a little bit of jimping. Now, it's fine. I can, you know, it flicks, but 
just like with the reverse flicking action, it works just fine. It's just not that satisfying. The detent is not that great. It works, but I don't know, it, it kind of feels a little bit off. Something about it. I really can't put my finger on it. I think it's just the smoothness really needs to, maybe it'll break in more over time, but I thought it would have by now and it hasn't. But when I first got it, it definitely was a lot more grittier than it is now. Um, and it's just like the, the detent ball breaking in through the, the, the coating, but it is D2. Lots of billboarding, not a big fan of that. I love the two-tone satin finish, love the blade shape. I love this little peak down here. It works great for utility cuts. It does cut fairly well, but it's not very thin. It is thick geometry, thick behind the edge, robust grind. It's not the thinnest. So that's another thing, you know, I wish it was a little thinner. Um, the Ergos, nice in the hand though, aside from the clip right here. When I'm back here and I'm really squeezing, that clip, here you guys can see it right now, it really gets into your hand, um, the side right here. But I always hold it up here, so it doesn't really matter to me right there. I usually hold it like this. Anyways, I do like the knife, but I thought I would like it a lot more. Um, I'm just not that impressed with it. It's not something that ends up in my pocket a lot. It's not something that I, I just overwhelmingly enjoy. D10 could be better. The, the action could just be better. The jimping could be better. And yeah, that's about it. And the geometry could be better. So that's the end of the video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.